Hello and welcome to Just Under 5 Minutes. In this episode, we will delve into the concept of why wars are often perceived as advantageous for an economy and explore the underlying rationale. While many of you may have come across this notion, few have taken the time to unravel how it operates. Our team has delved deep into this complex subject to decipher the logic behind it, with the primary objective of conveying it in a comprehensible manner. Now, brace yourself for some sophisticated terminology, but fear not, as we're here to break it down in simple terms. Let's dive in. We've all heard about the substantial financial support provided to Ukraine in its conflict with Russia. But the reality is a tad more intricate. This assistance isn't simply handed over, at least not without conditions. Yes, you heard correctly. It typically falls into one of two categories, A, a loan that necessitates repayment, or B, financial aid tied to specific pre-established conditions. For instance, imagine that country A intends to extend financial aid to country B and stipulates that the condition for this aid is that country B must use it to purchase goods exclusively from country A. In simpler terms, country B receives financial assistance, say a billion dollars, but this money must be spent on acquiring products from country A. It basically works as a line of credit. In this scenario, country B doesn't receive the money directly, instead, they procure the goods while in debt to country A. They benefit from obtaining what they need at a reasonable interest rate, or possibly even no interest at all. Nonetheless, the debt remains on their books, and they possess the necessary goods. On the other hand, country A, having effectively printed money, benefits from an upswing in its GDP, basically boosting the value of their economy, and a healthier trade balance, meaning more exports than imports with a partnering country, all due to the increase in exports to country B. Moreover, the debt is borne by country B, not country A. Indeed, country A emerges as the clear winner in this arrangement, reaping greater benefits than the other party involved. This brings us to the underlying reason why wars can be profitable. Country A provides both financial support and weaponry to country B, while country B engages in the war, sustains casualties, and accumulates debt. Country A capitalizes on an augmented economy, while country B, well, they find themselves in a precarious position. But the story doesn't conclude there. Once the conflict subsides, country A often steps in to offer low-interest loans for the reconstruction and rehabilitation of country B. This perpetuates the vicious cycle, as country A mandates that its companies engage in the reconstruction efforts, further augmenting their GDP, while country B rebuilds but simultaneously accumulates more debt, a burden they will bear for years to come. And that is how war can be economically advantageous, especially during and after the conflict. The outcome of this complex interplay results in major countries witnessing an increase in their currency's value, a surge in trade volume, and serves as a remedy for their own economy, all the while causing distress to others in the process. Given the numerous ongoing conflicts in today's world, I encourage you to scrutinize these dynamics and examine them for yourself. The truth behind this intricate web will undoubtedly unfold. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Please share your thoughts in the comments below, as we also invite you to like, subscribe, and explore our other videos and playlists.